So this week, some of us will be looking for the moon. And um, so that might be you. So anyway, um, I want to start with a prayer. Thank you for being here today. And uh, let's make sure we're praying for North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, uh, even Alabama, Georgia, all those places that were affected by the hurricane. Father, we want to come before you. We just uh, thank you for being our provider and protector. We thank you for this Shabbat, this day, to come together and to rest and to be with family. I pray that you be with all the folks affected by the hurricane and uh, pray that you'd help them as they recover and uh, get back to uh, their life. Uh, their Sabbath has been robbed from them today, most likely if they're cleaning up and doing things that have to be done and um, just pray that, um, that, that, that hurricane, the, what's left of it calms down and just rains itself out. And we just pray that, uh, this message, this word finds somebody that needs it and will be helpful and beneficial. And we pray that you get all the glory and honor for it. And it's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. All right. So this week's Torah portion, um, is you are standing and he went. So it comes to, it's in Deuteronomy 29, 10 uh, through 30 and Deuteronomy 31. So also in the comments, let me know if you are starting any of your feasts, if you're looking for the moon this week, any of those things. Awesome. Shabbat Shalom from England. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being across the pond today. I hope and pray that uh, your world is going well today, Christina. And uh, pray that everything is is right. Um, thank you for being here. So, but this uh, most people do this as a double portion, and we're going to kind of go through. You know, do this. We're closing out the year and closing out Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy is just such a beautiful book, uh, full with, with you know, it's just full of amazing principles. And uh, one thing that I keep pointing out in in this Torah portion is all the times um, that that you see where modern Christianity and maybe what most of us left, where there's an incredible amount of uh, concepts found in these Torah portions that uh, we, you know, that are universal, that everyone believes. And uh, so we'll see that, you know, we, we did a thing called Christians Follow Torah. And uh, yeah, you know, Christians follow a lot of Torah. They don't acknowledge it, but, uh, but they're following Torah. And uh, to a certain extent, and uh, it's it's always good to know those kinds of things and be able to point them out to people. So this week, also, uh, we interviewed Sarah Williams of Deborah Publishing, who has a website called Kahila, where it's a it's a website that um, will normally be shut down on the Sabbath, but the Sabbath it depends on where you are in the world when the Sabbath is. But um, she'll it's a an online. Um, e-commerce site that was geared towards Torah observant people. So look for that if you're interested in that. Um, and also I have to say, give a testimony. I had been praying for a new job and I had prayed a conditional prayer kind of based out of uh, what you see in Jacob's life. And you also, hey, Shabbat Shalom from Kentucky. I hope that you're staying dry today. Um, so, but I prayed a... Um, a prayer of a kind of a conditional prayer and so i had i had prayed three legs of this prayer one one was if i was um supposed to start like my own thing um that i have an ongoing prayer where i had prayed years ago and part of that prayer got you know was with was, was with a windmill and that happened but the other half of that prayer never happened and so i continued to pray for that. And, and that meant one thing. And then I prayed that, uh, in my existing job would give me a raise, would give me a phone, would give me a car allowance, something like that. And that would be confirmation to stay. And my third prayer was that somebody that I did not know would solicit me for a job. And, um, and that happened. So, uh, when I got that call just out of the blue, this guy's like, Hey, I got this company. He was a headhunter. And he's like, I think you'd be a perfect fit. And so I uh, followed through and applied, and sure enough, I got the job, and it ended up giving me uh, all the things I'd asked for and uh, in exactly that order. And so that was confirmation to me. And then, unfortunately, right after I got that confirmation, the company that I was working for decided to close everything up. So 
so y'all really blessed me and took care of me and provided and I, I just have to um, put that out there because you may be going through something similar and I encourage you to do that confirmation prayer that was powerful and effective you see it again with Gideon Gideon's fleece and um, and you see it with Jacob with the with the sheep with them you know the different colored sheep so I think it's a it's a powerful prayer and um, amen amen that's right what a blessing and, and praise Yahweh so it's all all him and so I encourage you to to pray prayers like that and when he answers them tell people you know tell everybody you know um, and especially the people that know you that's probably the most impactful because they see you day to day and they see directly um, how it benefited you and and encourages them in their prayer life and you know sometimes he doesn't answer the prayer sometimes he takes a long time to answer the prayer sometimes he takes years to answer the prayer and um, you know you just have to remember that his timeline and he's above time and um, it's different than ours and and for for reasons that we may not even know uh, we, we we a lot of times think we know what's best for ourselves but but he clearly knows what's best for us but but I'm excited I start that new job um, coming up in October and he, I was gonna start this coming week and uh, at some point that I, I had talked to them and they're like well if you want to just wait till the following Monday that's fine I'm like great so basically I have the the week off uh, coming up, which is which is kind of nice, and um, so I'm going to be busy. Uh, my oldest son is uh, constructing a house, and um, he needs assistance. So I'll imagine I'll be helping him do that. That's my plan, anyway. Um, and my um, so anyway, that's 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 where I'm at with everything. So uh, thank you, thank you. I'm excited about the the new job and opportunity and. Um, y'all y'all pr provided which he always does he always gives us what we need and sometimes it's uh, more than what we need so this week's Torah portion we'll go right into it um, you are standing so once again Deuteronomy is such a beautiful book so this is Deuteronomy 29 10 through 30 20 and then Deuteronomy 31 and so remember this is just the highlights and I encourage you to read through the Torah portion but this is you know kind of the highlights that I wanted to bring out um, and uh, the other word is uh, you are standing and so and so Deuteronomy 21 11 through 12 you see this in verse 11 your little ones your wives and thy stranger that is in thy camp from hewn of wood unto the drawer of water so and that is uh, the King James on that so um, the stranger that is in thy camp from the hewer of thy wood into the drawer of the water so this is for everybody you know so uh, the, you know a lot of people uh, will look at the Torah and say you know the Torah is just just for the quote unquote Jew and there are many Jewish people today that will argue with what we do and go oh, you can't do that you're not a Jew and um, this clearly was all the people that were with them the strangers the people that work for them um, everybody's doing this and participating if they're if they're with your clan they're they're part of you they're doing this and um, and so it goes back to that idea of a mixed multitude and that's a whole nother study but you know I believe what makes us uh, is, is similar to what you see in the New Testament when he says there's neither Jew nor Greek nor free nor slave and basically what he's saying is what makes you part of Israel is what you do and it doesn't matter what your bloodline is it's what you do that's what makes you part of Israel so and then Deuteronomy 29 11 through 12 uh, 12 says that thou shalt enter into a covenant with Yahweh your Elohim and into his oath which Yahweh your Elohim makes with you this day and and he doesn't break his promises isn't that amazing so uh, so many of us uh, you know if you put your faith in man um, you know man's gonna disappoint you man breaks his promises uh, often so but Yahweh doesn't or, or Yahuwah however you want to say it um, he does not break his promise he's faithful uh, Deuteronomy 29 19 I shall have peace though I walk in the imagination of my heart so that's that's just such a such a beautiful scripture um, just so many scriptures like this that you can glean out of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy was one of those books 
if you're like me, you're probably like, oh my gosh, <clears throat> Deuteronomy. You know, uh, you, the the preacher gets up and starts preaching out Deuteronomy, and you're like, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm checking out. I'm taking my nap. So, th- unfortunately, that is how many people see Deuteronomy and Numbers today. But uh, but we we've, we've app- we learned to appreciate them. So. A scripture that goes with this, Je- Jeremiah seventeen nine. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Because so many people go, you just follow your heart, and Jeremiah tells you that's a bad thing. <laughs> and and how many movies and cartoons have there been made that talk about following your heart, following your heart? And in essence, you can say that means what they're really saying is do whatever you want. And uh, that doesn't turn out very well. That's kind of what the world is doing right now, and uh, it doesn't turn out very good. Uh, lots of bad examples, um, or good examples, of how this doesn't work. Uh, Romans one twenty one goes with this. Because that when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So your heart can be darkened, it can be deceived, it can be tricked. Um, And these are people who knew Elohim. This is the elect. You know, these are not the lost. You know, these are people who were in in the elect, um, and they got deceived. Ezekiel 36, 26, A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put in within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That comes from Deuteronomy 29, 9-30. So, you know, we often hear people talk about the new covenant. And I, and I believe that, you know, I'm going to say, I, 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 I don't claim to be an expert, but I do believe that there's something happening towards this new covenant, that we're in the process of working towards this, that this is happening. So when we study the Torah, when we study his word, when we do his feast, when we learn to to do his things and his ways, and which are love God and love people, and he tells you how to love God and love people through the, these Torah portions and through De- Deuteronomy, that is the process of taking our stony heart and making it a fleshly heart. And it's a, it's a long, drawn-out process. You look at the life of Abraham. You look at you know, all these patriarchs, and they, they didn't, it didn't happen overnight. We know we think about them often in their later years and think about them being excellent men and women of Yah. But, um, but they had some rocky beginnings. Uh, they definitely had uh, some hearts of flesh, and over time, they're working towards this new man. And that's what, you know, that's what this is, this new covenant idea, this stony heart, flesh. It's the, it's this idea of becoming a new man, a new person, where we, um, you know, where, where we just continue to work on it. And I encourage you to pray that prayer of, you know, Father, I pray that, that, um, that I will learn to see the world the way you see it. I learn to see people the way you see them. Um, and uh, I grieve over what grieves you, because there's a lot of scripture that supports that when we grieve over what grieves Yah, you know, we're on the right track. And uh, in the world right now, there's a lot of things that grieve him, and it should also grieve us, and that's where, you know, we should be concerned when there are groups of people who call themselves believers, and uh, they're not grieved and they over the things that grieve him and embrace them, that's a bad sign. Uh, stay away from that place. But you know that. You wouldn't be listening to this. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty four says, The heart of his anger. What is meant by this? The, I'm sorry, the heart. The heat. <laughs> the heat of his anger. And so we have this terrible apocalyptic uh, thing back there. So, um, and then Deuteronomy 29, 25 27. Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against this land to bring it 
all to the curses that are written in this book. So back to this connection. So 29, 24, you know, unfortunately, this is connected to the curses that are written in the book. So uh, Deuteronomy, you get a lot of blessings and curses talk for sure. Deuteronomy 31 through 20, when you remember his word, return to Yahweh and keep his commands. And a great example is, uh, you know, Hezekiah, when they open up the Torah scroll and read it again, they remember his words and they start keeping his commands. In essence, that's what we begin to do. We have forgotten his words and his commands and we're coming back into them and they're bringing new life into our families in this modern age in a time and a place which we'd kind of forgotten. So just so many, so many nuggets of of great wisdom and truth can be found here. Deuteronomy 30, 30, uh, that section again, uh, you see reference to the second exodus. He will gather you. So, you know, this idea of, you know, he's going to be gathering us up again, and and we look forward to this uh, in the near future. Matthew fifteen twenty four. but he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's who he was sent for. And, you know, what makes you a sheep? Well, if you look at characteristics of sheep, you know, so I encourage you, if you get the opportunity one day to raise sheep, you should. Or if you get to be around some sheep, observe them. You know, just sit. Sit and watch them. Especially watch them at feeding time when the shepherd comes to feed them. And, uh, you know, he just, I saw this years ago, my dad had sheep. And then today my father-in-law has sheep. And, uh, you know, they, you know, when they start speaking, the sheep are like, hey, whoa, hey, I know that guy. And they start running. They're like, something good's fixing to happen. We're going to get a little grain, uh, some extra food here. And, you know, they come running. And then they start hollering at each other because they, they all have their heads down eating. And they're like, whoa, wait, wait, everybody's moving. Now I'm going to move too. And they all start running. So, um, you know, sheep. Sheep follow the master. They follow their leader. Um, they uh, want to stay in the pasture of their master because they know they're going to get taken care of. They know if they stray outside that pasture, he can't offer his protection. So at our at our place here, uh, we have um, guardian dogs, and they patrol the edges and they protect um, predators from coming in. You know, we don't have coyotes. We don't have Anything like that coming in and trying to take the sheep because they see these big dogs uh, roaming around at night and they're like, oh man, that's not worth it. There's a lot of easier things out there in the world to go after than to deal with this big, big dog. So, but the sheep are comforted by that. You know, they, they, they know that they're safe. Uh, they know that they're protected. And so just so many lessons found in the sheep and in a beautiful scripture um, that, you know, Yeshua was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's you and I. And uh, we're being gathered back in this, um, this great uh, second exodus that is coming that will make the first one look like nothing. Deuteronomy 36 through 7 talks about circumcising your heart and the heart of, the, of your seed to love Yahweh with all of your heart. And you will return and obey Yahweh and do all his commandments. And I pray that this this kind of thing is happening in your family. And uh, and if not, pray about it. Start praying about it. You know that's that's the biggest thing we can do. And and even if it doesn't happen for your generation, but because you start praying about it now, maybe it happens for your the second generation. Maybe it happens for your grandkids or your great grandkids. But start praying that, uh, you know, I think another good prayer to pray all the time is praying that the, um, the children's hearts would turn towards their fathers. Pray that uh, they would lo- love, love, the, love Elohim with all their heart, soul, and mind. Love his word, hunger and thirst for his righteousness. You know, pray those kinds of prayers. And, and those are prayers that are going to be answered. Because the Father wants those, and, and, and pray that they will seek Him, because if they seek Him, they're going to find Him. Whether that is your spouse, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, pray diligently that, the, that they will seek Him. Because if they will seek Him, and some, sometimes people are seeking and they, don't, they may not outwardly show it. In fact, they might argue with you a little bit. 
but but maybe secretly their inner person they're seeking him and uh we we need to especially pray that for young children today because you know the the world consumes their oh, sorry I hit the mic the world consumes them with uh, so many distractions frankly it consumes me and you um with so many con, you know distractions of our devices and, and so many of those are bad and just time sucks that you know don't don't lead to anything and in fact i would say if you haven't read the torah portion this week you know stop listening to me go read it that's more important so um but but this idea of circumcising your heart found in deuteronomy that's another scripture to take someone to and go look this is the point it's always been the point it wasn't about flesh and so people want to argue and go well are you doing this you're doing this all that you know that they want to combat us and go well you're not doing this you're not doing this you're not doing this so you're breaking all of torah like yes we break torah i have to tell you that 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 that's what that's what messiah said all have fallen short of the glory and um but but that doesn't mean that you know like paul says it doesn't mean that we just go abound and sinning uh that's not what it means but um but yes when when people want to argue and um try to say this is ridiculous to follow these things and you know they don't understand that uh, the principle all along was that our hearts would be circumcised and um so anyway that's uh that's a long complicated subject so uh thank you for the comment biblical hebrew the heart is where someone makes choices motivated by desires amen to that you know so the gut you know um uh, where I come from, you know, you do uh, a, a gut decision kind of thing, uh, you know, and and remember that uh, Yahweh made us, and sometimes science doesn't know everything, do they? And so I, I believe that, uh, you know, they don't, uh, some people are starting to acknowledge that um, thoughts and emotions and uh, ideas and feelings are present in more than just your mind, and the reason they know this is, uh, transplant people. Uh, if you just Google that sometime, um, you know, Google and find some stories where people talk about getting a transplant and having these memories that they didn't have. And there are people who have gotten heart transplants or kidney transplants, and they start telling their family about some memory, and they're like, that didn't happen. What are you talking about? And they think they're going crazy. And then they talk sometimes to the family that donated or the, you know, the that unfortunately died, and they're like, yeah, that happened in our family. That's our story. And um, which just shows and confirms yet again that Yah's word is true, and um, and, and, and he, uh, he understands us because uh, he made us, and he knows how this, this works. And there's this idea of your emotions and your heart uh, sometimes actually being tied to, like, the kidneys and the liver and the internal organs, and uh, that's why I think you see so much scripture about the left lobe of the liver, and uh, and then and then even being connected to the the toe, um, you know, and and it kind of covers you from what's happening inside to what you do. So anyway, thank you for that's a great comment for sure. One hundred percent, amen. Uh, Christina, in biblical Hebrew, the heart is where someone makes choices mo motivated by desires. And that's what he's looking for. He's wanting to change our hearts. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 14. Um, you've heard people say, we can't keep the law. It's impossible. Don't you know? Why are you trying to do this? You can't even keep the law. You can't do it. What are you trying to do? And so there are a lot of people, especially in platforms like TikTok that are highly interactive. People will say these things back. And there have been times when I would argue back but sometimes I'm just like whatever I, I don't have time to mess with this uh, like and and so sometimes what I've done is I've argued with people a little bit my wife would say way too much but a, a little bit and then I'll say you know I'd be happy to have a phone call with you and discuss it if you want to elaborate more if you're really concerned about my salvation let's let's have a conversation call me and no one ever wants to do that I'm you know I get it that could kind of be weird 
Um, but um, anyway, it's much easier to be keyboard warriors and say things back. And 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 I always take it if you get some comments like that, just take it with a grain of salt too, because these are keyboard warriors. If you were to see them face to face, they be they would they would calm way down. Um, it's easy to villainize someone that you don't know, that you don't see face to face. Uh, and so that's easy to do. And that's unfortunately one of the problems with the social media world. So anyway, but you see this comment many times. You can't, we can't keep the law. All right. And then Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 14, it continues. And it says, it is in your heart so that you may do it. That's what the scripture says. And the scripture also says later that about the children of Israel is it, it says they refused to keep it. And so everyone wants to point to them and go, look, they couldn't even keep the law. They couldn't do it. No, <laughs> that is not right. And I challenge you to go find that scripture where it says that they refused to keep it. They, you know, that that's what it was. They refused to do it. He said, here is, here's what you need to do. And they absolutely refused. All right. So once again, we continue to, to see this, uh, new heart thing. Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27 says, a new heart also I will give you and a new spirit I will pour, I will put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, which we just saw came from Deuteronomy. And I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So, you know, as we as we mature in this, as we as we continue to work on this stony heart, man, isn't that what we need help with? Our hearts continue to be stony. Uh, they continue to be hard um, and wayward, and it is something that takes a lifetime. And we have to continue to work on that stony heart, and, and we want that heart of flesh. We want that writable heart. You know, it's basically like a hard drive that's writable and, uh, you know, um, and we want to be, have that heart of vellum or that heart of flesh that he can write on. He can write his Torah. He can write his commandments. And how do we get there? You know, the old adage, you have to fake it till you make it. Yeah. There's some truth in that. You know, sometimes you have to just do it and, uh, and, and you do it enough times and you, you can kind of get there. So you have to start somewhere and, uh, loving your neighbor as yourself, uh, doing and following uh, Torah, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Those are all, everything hangs on those. And and how do you do those? You know, so a lot of people are like, well, that's, that's the only two things you got to do. Those are Jesus' commandments. Yeah, but where did he get those? And, and And so the Torah elaborates on how you do that. So anyway, Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8 are connected. For this is the covenant that I will make with thee, house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be to me a people. Once again, the wedding language. So I encourage you to study out wedding language. Our friend Michael Oman, um, who now works with Donkey Speaks, but Michael Oman has a great series of teachings about the wedding and uh, powerful, and there's such a strong connection to this whole story from the beginning of the book to the end of the book is, you know, you've heard someone say it's God's love story to his people, and that is so true, um, but it's specifically a story about a bride and a groom, and unfortunately, most of the time, the bride, us, has been wayward, not just wayward, but just an absolute harlot, been a slut, if you will, uh, just been chasing after all the wrong things um, and pursuing all the wrong things with a vengeance while the father is slow, slow to anger, abounding in grace and very patient, very patient and loving and kind. Um, so... But the whole story of the Bible is a cyclical story, and so it starts with Adam and Eve uh, being the bride, um, 
and walking and talking with their their groom in the garden every day. And then Adam was supposed to be like a Melchizedek priesthood uh, to the people around him. I believe there are other people in the garden created at the same time. Um, that's a whole rabbit trail. Um, but when you read Genesis, uh, that does appear to be two two mankind creation accounts, and that that also solves your incest problem. Um, and anyway, so 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 he you know, and then Adam and Eve didn't do a very good job there, so they broke that broke down. And then again, when Moses is with the people on Mount Sinai, that's another wedding. While that wedding is happening. The bride cheats on its groom and basically has a orgy when it says in Exodus they rose up to play. Go look up that word play, see what they meant by that, and you'll find that it was crazy, debaucherous. And so part of that process, he makes them, he grinds up the golden calf, puts it in the water, and they drink it. And so then Moses is commanded to kill all the people who are guilty. And I was always like, well, how do you know who's guilty? Well, you know who's guilty because of um, the, the the jealous husband that you read about later. And uh, there's a procedure where the jealous husband could take your woman to the priest and they put dirt on the, you know, put dirt in the water and she drinks it. If she's guilty of cheating on him, you know, there are physical manifestations that happen in her body. So I believe that in the golden calf, there was a physical manifestation in the people's body when they drank the golden calf water, um, they they showed the signs, and that's how they knew who the 3,000 to kill, basically. So anyway, so the bride cheats on him, and so, um, you know, Yah's intention the whole time was to make this his priesthood, to make this a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And by the time you get back to Acts, that's when it starts happening again. But by the time you get to Acts, things have improved, I do believe. I believe you've got people that have more receptive hearts by that time, but still we know what happened since Acts. You know, people have fallen away and lost their way. But anyway, I encourage you to study that out and, and, and start looking at the Bible through the lens of wedding language and pay attention to when you see wedding language like this. This should sound familiar to wedding vows because that's what it is. And so Yah puts his wedding vows all over Scripture. So Laura Lee, Shabbat Shalom, thank you for being here. So, um, but, but, uh, but Yahweh puts his, his hand on this and puts uh, in multiple references to wedding. And so that is, um, you are standing. Then, and he went, which is Deuteronomy 31. So we'll go into, this is the double portion part. In 31.3, he shall go over before you. And you know, and when I read this, you know, I think it's a reference to the Spirit. And so we often think, and I've heard many people say, they didn't have the Spirit back then. They don't have it until the New Testament. And, and I'm not so sure about all that. I, I understand it. I see where you're coming from on it. But there are references to me that kind of tip their hat to uh, the Spirit going before them and doing a work uh, for even them back in that day. So, you know... I don't claim to be an expert or know anything, you know, uh, feel free to challenge me on that, but I encourage you to study it out. Look at it. 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with the with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So anytime in the, in, in the Torah you see the doubling up on things, the tripling up on any things, that's super important. And, you know, it's just a, it's a liter, literary technique many writers use, use today. So, you know, that he's saying it back to back, the same things. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. Be bold. Go in there. And, and the second time, you know, remember the first time the people's hearts failed when they saw the giants and the rumor and the terrible things that happened. And um, Joshua and Caleb were the only people. And then later, 
you see a total reversal, uh, you know, because in the narrative, uh, Joshua, you know, is the next thing that happens. And you see they send, it's just a completely different outcome um, when when they go into the land. So they, they definitely learned from their past mistakes here a little bit. So in 31.27, for I know how rebellious and stiff-necked you are. You've been rebellious against the Lord while I'm still alive with you. How much more will you rebel after I die? I mean, boy, that's that had to be soul-crushing to Moses. Um, all right, so Christina, yes, one of my favorite books related to the wedding vows is Hosea. Incredible commitment reflecting Yeshua's love for us. Amen. Uh, you know, the things that he asked Hosea to do, and, and when you when you put that in the uh, the picture and the context that he wants us to look at that about the Father pursuing us, um, then Laura Lee also says she loves Hosea. Yes, it's it's a beautiful book. And don't you know Hosea is like you? You want me to do what? I, I, that's the girl in my dreams. I'm gonna marry her, and she's gonna do this. Um, and it's like okay, <laughs> all right. This sounds like a a great life for me. You know, and that's that's another thing, whole another subject. You know, study out prophets. You know, a lot of people today will say, I'm a prophet, I do this. And when you look at the life of some of these prophets, you go, mm, are you a prophet? Because they had some tough things that they had to do. So anyway, but Hosea, yes, is a perfect example of that. Thank you for, for, for pointing that out. But, um, but, but yeah, it had to be such a sad thing for Moses because uh, he knows that, man, these guys, they are um, they're going to do some things here, and it's not going to be good. I wish that they would have totally got it, but, but they didn't. Um, so, and then uh, a beautiful principle that we find in these Torah portions is um, every seven years you read the law and there's a debt release. You get this freedom, you know. What would our world be like today if we did that? And and I will say I've benefited from this in my family, my wife's family. Um, they follow Torah, and we owed them a debt, um, and uh, they did this for us, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful thing. They helped us do a, a house project, and then uh, we owed them some money, and they're like, you know what? It's a uh, year of jubilee, or, or not year of jubilee, um, the sabbatical. And, uh, you know, we release you of this debt. And so, um, yeah, so um, that that's a great principle. You know, what would our world be like if, if we did that? And so, and then even with the year of Jubilee, the land was tied to it. And, uh, you know, they would prorate the price of land according to the year of Jubilee. But we know through history that they didn't do these things quite so well. So... Anyway, so that is a brief summary of You Are Standing, and he went, uh, Deuteronomy 29 through Deuteronomy 31. So I appreciate those of you guys that were here today, and uh, um, and we do have the Torah portions on Sabbath Lounge. I can show you uh, what that looks like, I think. So, yeah, so in Sabbath Lounge... Um, you see that there is a teaching series, and you can go to the Torah portions, and it's all broken down there, um, and you can go to Deuteronomy and click the week you want. They're also kind of grouped together. There's a blue letter Bible section. If you like the blue letter, it kind of puts it together like that, and you can see um, see that. You can also do, uh, it takes you to the Bible Gateway, straight to the Nog, but you can change it to whatever version you want to read. The only reason I like the Nog, I know it's not perfect. Some people are like, Matt, we hate the Nog. Uh, but uh, I do like that it translates most of the names and it's fairly easy to read. And uh, especially when you read it out loud, you know, uh, those of you, um, the, you know, I, I, the King James is what a lot of people do. But man, I have such a hard time reading it out loud because I don't know what I'm reading half the time because it is just not a language that I'm familiar with. Old King, uh, especially being a West Texas boy, uh, yeah, I, I don't, that's not normal. For I have a hard enough time with regular English, much less fancy King's English. So, you know, I've always heard the old adage, and I believe it, you know, what's the best version of the Bible? It's the one you're going to read, um, uh, the, the one you'll read. So, um, 
Christina, thanks for having me. It was great. Have a blessed day and week ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, we are going to pray. And if you will, um, if if not, if there's no one that has prayer requests, I know we've got um, one of our people that came in today is from Kentucky, uh, Shiracha. And so I uh, hope that she's dry and uh, all is well there in Kentucky. Um, but if you have any prayer request, I'll put you know I'll give you a second to put that in there. But we'll we'll close this out in prayer, and I'll keep my eyes peeled as I pray. But thank you for being here, and um, hope you have a great. Uh, you know we're going into the feast, we're going into the end of the year, and pray that all of that's going well. You know um, for you and your family. And uh, all right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, just thank you so much for the blessing of being able to use technology for good and that we have this commonality around the world, that we are, um, that, that we are uh, joining with uh, many people doing the same thing. And we pray for each and every person that was, was in this uh, today. And uh, we pray especially for our um, Shirach in uh, Kentucky, and that she's dry and safe from the hurricane. Be with Laura Lee and her son, and um, and he's trying to teach Torah. And so I can't think of a better uh, scenario uh, to have a, a listening audience than 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 where he's at. And uh, I pray that uh, you would protect him and keep him safe and um, keep him from harm and. Pray that you'd bless him as he studies Torah, as he teaches Torah, and pray that the people around him are receptive and that he can make a difference. And Father, just pray for an incredible ministry, a life-changing ministry. We pray that uh, people, you know, isn't it ironic sometimes that people who are uh, in prison, who are not free, learn to be the most set free. <laughs> and... Um, we we'll just pray that you be with be with her son and uh, bless him on his journey. And we thank you for KMSR seventeen hundred AM for being here and Jackie and Two Feathers Smith. We thank you for them and their ministry. And just pray that you bless their radio station and help it to grow and and continue to to be a beacon of hope and light into the world around them. Uh, we thank you for. Um, just the, the this week's Torah portion, the beautiful words found in Deuteronomy. We thank you for the upcoming feast dates. And Father, in the in what we read today, we pray that you continue to um, continue to soften our stony hearts and help us as we continue to to rewrite the software on our hearts and to re re hardwire re hardwire our brains and our minds to think the way you think, to see people the way you see them, to be grieved over what grieves you. And we pray for our children and our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our cousins, the children that are yet to be born in our families, that they would seek you. And we pray that as we as, as we pursue your ways and your Torah, uh, Scripture says that there'll be a blessing for a, for a thousand generations upon our bloodline. And we pray that uh, that our bloodline will continue these ways, that they will continue to hunger and thirst and seek for your word, seek for your righteousness. They will pursue your feast, your moedim, and pursue your things. And Father, we pray um, for a, a blessing of healing for the nations and uh, modern-day Samaritans, women's ministry, and that you would guide that and help it to have an infect, effective impact on his body. We praise you for that ministry, and um, we just thank you for um, all that you do, and we pray that people have a great Shabbat and a great time of family gathering, and uh, that there's much peace in their homes, and that uh, you lead their hearts and minds to nuggets of Scripture today that they hadn't thought about, and help them as they apply it to their life. And uh, we just thank you for being our Elohim and being our provider and protector and ancient of days. Thank you for being uh, who you say you are. And uh, it's in it's in your son's son's name, Yeshua, that we pray these things. Amen. So, all right. Well, I think that's it. I think I'll keep as long as I've got time to do these, and um, I'll keep doing these and. Um, We'll see you again next week. Thank you for being here, and I will save this. 
and stream this and other platforms. This will be viewable in YouTube if you missed it, and I'll put probably this even in TikTok if I can. So, um, yes, thank you, Laura Lee, that you were here, and thank you for uh, all of the comments from Laura Lee to KMSR1700 to Christina, Sriracha. Uh, thank you all for, for being here and participating uh, in the comments. Uh, appreciate that. It's, it's a great thing to be able to interact with each other. And um, anyway, you guys have a great, great Shabbat, and we'll see you later. Thank you.